Aloha mai kako, and welcome to another episode of Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. I'm your host, Walter Kawaiaia. Today's episode will take us to the backside of Haleakala on the island of Maui, where we will share memories and talk story about my latest uh, 2019 huaka'i for my adult Hawaiian music and ukulele students and classes. Joining me to share in this amazing journey is my wife, Luana Kawai'ai. Aloha, Luana. Thank Aloha. You. Thank you for joining me, my Thank favorite you for person. Me. <laughs> yes. I hope okay, so, so I'm gonna, we're going to get right to it. We got a lot of uh, things to cover, but before I ask uh, to show uh, my first picture, I just want to give a general background. So I've been playing Hawaiian music and teaching for uh, 50 some years, uh, traditional Hawaiian music. And as part of, uh, part of the, the method to really instill uh, and to bring home uh, the message behind the teaching of the different songs, etc., I usually do uh, once a year, take all of my adult students, we do a huakai, it's well planned out by the students, a lot of people involved. Uh, and we go to places, um, we, we meet with uh, families of either the composers or uh, for whom the song was written about. And that way, it makes a real human connection. Uh, we talk a lot about making those human connections on my other show, Roots, Roots Hawaii. Anyway, so I'd like to, there, there was a picture that was, uh, if I can, yeah, there we go. So that, that shot is uh, back uh, on, in Maui, uh, in Hana. This is the Kahana Botanical Gardens. But what you're looking at off in the distance uh, is one of the largest heiaus in all of Polynesia. This is the Pi'ilani Hale Heiau. It's an agricultural heiau. It's equivalent to a six-story building. And we were there in 1997, my wife and I, along with several of my students, to participate in the dedication. It was a 23-year process. Uh, what you saw there in that picture 23 years ago was just covered in shrub. And so it took... Um, a nonprofit organization some, and a lot of volunteers, uh, 23 years, to scale all of that shrubbery back so that we could enjoy what we see today. And the garden maintains that. Um, our second picture is just another shot of the heiau, a little closer up to it. This is kind of just a portion, and I'll show you our next picture there. Um, yeah, that's kind of special if you can hold that there for a second. So you're looking at this is where when halau or People come to offer ho'okupu uh, to the heiau. This is where they come. There's a, you can't see it here, but closer to the base, there's a, there's a special rock uh, that where gift offerings, uh, makana, is given to the, to the gods and to the heiau. And so we, we participated there, gathered all my students. We had uh, a number of oli or chants that were performed and a dance, and we sang, and it was really special. Uh, I think we have another picture. Um, oh, there we are. Oh, okay. So these are the two old fogies that you're seeing live on the show. But there we were taking a shot of the Hasegawa General Store. So yes, it's still there. And, and we shopped in there. You can, you can buy some, you know, uh, odds and ends, you know, but there, I'm not too sure the history behind the Hasegawa General Store. Um, that wasn't on our tour. Uh, we just went there to pick up some last minute um, odds and end. Okay, I think our next picture there. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just, I think this is a selfie. And so you can see the grading right behind us is a shot. And, and just as you get closer to the hail, you realize it, like I said earlier, it's equivalent to a six story building, which is pretty amazing. I remember back in 1997, you remember that experience yes, we had? I do. Um, so the lady that uh, she's no longer with us, but she was, she ran the botanical gardens. It sits on the Kahanu family uh, Ahupua'a. Yeah. And uh, on, the Kavai, on my Kavai'ai side, through my grandfather, uh, Henry, were related to the Kahanu. And so she took a liking to my wife and I. And she, when the ceremony was all through and we got through playing music, and she took the two of us onto the backside and we walked up the, the steps mm -hmm. to the platform. And I think our next, there's another picture of an aerial view of that shot. If I could ask uh, Eric to, there it is. Yeah, that is the aerial shot of the Pi'ilani Haleheau. And you, you really can't appreciate its length, but it's equivalent to the length of two football fields. 
Uh, so that's, that's 200 yards. That's enormous. Again, this is an agricultural uh, hail uh, dedicated to, to the gods for, for those purposes. And so if you ever have a chance to visit Hana, if you've never been there before, uh, it's a wonderful uh, tour. Yes, they have a lot of uh, historical things on the grounds itself. They have one of the largest collections of uh, Ulu. Uh, they have the Ulu Grove, I believe. Uh, there's 300 plus Ulu yes. trees uh, taking up some 11 acres on the property. It's incredible. But they have every variety uh, in the Ulu family there in, in the gardens. And so it's pretty amazing stuff. Um, but one of the, you know, going back to my students, so I've been teaching now traditional Hawaiian music to about 90 adults comprising of people living on Oahu and on the island of Maui itself. And we've been doing huaka'i since 2009. I'm in my 16th year. I'll be starting next year, my 17th year of teaching um, traditional Hawaiian music to these, these folks. And we're all getting older, <laughs> so <laughs> it's becoming a lot harder. Our first huaka'i was uh, on the Big Island. We actually did three separate huaka'i to uh, uh, Moko Keawe. Uh, just we, we divided up into three separate quadrants and it was an amazing experience and you know sometime in the future I might share some of that with you and then we went to Molokai the following year and then we did two uh, separate huakai to the island of Kauai and this year uh, this past September we did our first of two uh, to the island of Maui this again being the backside of Haleakala there in covering the districts or the, the towns of Hana, and then on to Kipahulu, and then on to Kaupo. And so that, that covered a, a period of uh, Thursday, Friday, I think two full days of Huakai, and it was, it was very wonderful. exciting. But, you know, before I get into the next uh, set of uh, pictures, um, this really brings home, and, I, and throughout the course of the year, as I'm having classes and teaching my students, um, I, I constantly remind them about how important it's going to be when you get to these places and meet the families uh, for whom these songs were written for or about. Um, it'll never be the same again, because you'll have that source of reference uh, that imagery in your mind when you sing the song going forward into the future. And so um, they've been with me uh, long enough. They've experienced all of these different types of huakai. And so they know. Our next, our next picture there, uh, Eric. Okay, so we're still in Hana. And I think this is Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. We're leaving the next morning to go to Kipahulu. But that's my wife and myself. And I hired this bass player, a, a local brother from, the, from Hana there. Uh, to join us that evening, we were asked to play in the main dining room. And uh, it was great. Uh, uh, the dining room uh, was packed. Uh, half of it was my students because I required <laughs> it of them. <laughs> and, uh, and the rest were made up of hotel guests and, you know, people from the, uh, from the HANA community. And we, ha we had a great time that evening. It was wonderful. It, it was just wonderful. Um, let me ask you, Luana, you've, um, you've gone on almost every huaka'i. That we've gone on. Can you remember? I mean, I, I remember uh, the one that we did in your, yes. your Onehana now of Kohala. Uh, was there anything special that you remember, perhaps about that or anything else? Um, well, that, that is my, the land of my birth in Kohala, so it was very special when we did the Kohala Kumo tour. Kohala Kumo tour. And um, each of the locations as I was growing up was of great importance to me. But especially nearing the end when we, when we were at uh, Pololu Valley, oh, overlooking yeah. Pololu, uh, we sang this song that the students were not aware that we were going to do this for them. Yeah. And um, uh, it was called Lovely is Kohala. And I danced as my husband sang. And here we were sitting on the edge of a precipice. <laughs> That went down into Pololu, but we were on the Sprout family property. That was my uncle, my Uncle Dale's family. And it was so beautiful. And when we, when we performed, you couldn't see a dry eye there. They, yeah. It was so beautiful because they were looking at the surrounding area, which is absolutely gorgeous in Pololu Valley and the whole area of Kohala. And, and um, as 
I, we danced and we sang. They just uh, they internalize that, like in all of these huakai that we go on. And when uh, when brother when this um, uh, when we teach the songs, well, actually, my husband when he teaches the songs, they internalize it, and so it's it's extremely important for the the individual who is learning, because then it becomes a part of the, who they are. Mm -hmm. when they sing the song again. And that was one of the songs they learned, is um, Loveliest Kohala. From that point on, they, they learned that song. Yeah. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, yeah. but thanks for sharing that. You know, um, And I, as she was describing that, so any of you that have been to Hawaii Island on North Kohala, you know that when you, you travel the, the uh, uh, Akonipule Highway, it ends there at the lookout at Pololu Valley. Mm -hmm. and when you're standing there, it's a, it, you know, on, a, on a beautiful day, you know, Pololu is on the, I guess we'd call it the, the western end, northwestern side of uh, Hawaii Island. And then uh, between Pololu <coughs> all the way going down the Hamakua coast to Waipio, I believe it consists between oh, Pololu oh. and, in, including Pololu and um, Waipio Valley, oh, there are a total of 12, 12 or 13, 13. valleys. And in ancient times, these valleys were occupied with Hawaiians who lived there. And you might say, you know, when you look at the uh, pictures of that coast and you look at these valleys, we think today, why would anyone want to live there? Well, it's a different time. We, none of us would want to live there because we're so used to so the, remote, the nature right. of the environment that we live in, <clears throat> you know. And we're city folk. Um, and our country folk, it's a different kind of country from back in those days. But why would the Hawaiians want to live there? For a couple of reasons. They had the ocean. Hawaiians depended on the ocean uh, for food uh, source. And they were close enough to the water supply that those Kohala Mountains brought to them. So it, it, was, it was really the perfect setting. So I'm going to ask my <laughs> wife. Uh, we're almost up to our break time. She's going to share a story. So we go down to Kipahulu. Actually, I'm going to ask my uh, uh, Eric if he could put up the next video. I think this, well, I mean, not video, but uh, a picture. Okay, so before we left Hana, we, we sang a song, Waikaloa, composed by John P. Lenny Watkins. And this is what you're looking at is the area known as Waikaloa. And that lady sitting there with a, with a beautiful red um, uh, outfit on, her name is Maano Smith. And she, family, uh, uh, to the, the composer of that song, John P. Ilani Watkins, and she lives there and grew up there, generations of her family. And our next uh, picture there, Eric. Okay, so before we go to break, I wanted to show this. this. We're in Kipahulu now, and we're standing outside of a church. The name of the church is called uh, Palapala Ho'omau. And the people that are joining, my wife and I, are off to my right, you're looking at it, your left, uh, is a gal by the name of um, Fawn Helakahi. And she's part of the family, and she knows the story be, be behind this particular song. And so we're going we're gonna to take a 60-second break. When we come back from the break, my wife is going to share uh, a portion of the story that defines Kamakani uh, Ka'ili Aloha, which in Hawaiian translated means love snatching wind. It's a beautiful story that Luana will share with us, and we'll come back from the break. She'll do that, and then following her sharing of the story, we'll talk a little bit more, and then she and I will sing a song live. Um, and so this year on Ukulele Songs of Hawaii, your host, Walter Kavaiaya, and joining me, my lovely wife, Luana, will be back after this short break. Aloha. My name is Becky Sampson, and I'm the host of It's About Time. On the Think Tech Hawaii, a digital nonprofit organization that's raising public awareness. Join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. where we talk about real issues. Some of the topics will include entrepreneurship, health, life skills, and growing your business. So once again, this is Becky Sampson on It's About Time on Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Jane Sawyer with the Small Business Administration and one of your hosts for Adventures in Small Business, a partnership with ThinkTech and with the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center. 
all serving small businesses in Hawaii and telling you the story about their strategies, their ideas, their drive, and the way they help Hawaii succeed and be a bright light in small business. You'll find it here every Thursday at ThinkTech. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you soon. Aloha mai, and we're back talking story with Luana and recounting this year's Huakai 2019 here at Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. I'm your host, Walter Kawaiaia. So before the break, we were just kind of, we showed you a picture there of the frontage of this little Hawaiian church called uh, Palapala Ho'omau. And just for reference, the church sits on the Lindbergh, Charles Lindbergh property, and his, Charles Lindbergh's granddaughter, Erin uh, Lindbergh, lives there. Um, and she manages and takes care of the property. And she allowed uh, us to come that day, that Friday morning, uh, and to pack. We literally packed the inside of the church. We sang a couple of spiritual songs and uh, brought, brought everyone to tears. And so then I introduced Erin. Uh, she shared a little bit about um, the place and the background. And then I introduced this uh, wonderful Hawaiian lady, Juan Helakahi who gave us a tremendous insight into the composition uh, of this particular song, Kamakani Ka'ili Aloha, that we're going to sing for you in a little bit. But I'm going to ask Luana if she would to share uh, the story of the love snatching a wind. Luana? Thank you. This is a story. It's told of a young girl and boy who grew up caring for each other and eventually marrying. They lived happily for many years. Then the woman grew restless and desired to end their relationship. The man was torn because of his love for his wife, so he sought a kahuna who counseled him on what to do. He was to take an umeke, a gourd which was cut in half, and to place in it all the important mementos of his love for his wife, and to take it to the beach and let the umeke go along with his sweet memories of his beloved. As fate would have it, the woman was walking along the same beach and saw the umeki in the ocean. She picked it up and opened the cover, and suddenly a brisk wind, kamakani ka'ili aloha, the love-snatching wind, enveloped her. And as she looked in the umeki, she recognized the mementos from her husband, her beloved husband, and suddenly that familiar feeling of love overwhelmed her, and as she saw her husband, their love was rekindled. So we share with you the song, Kamakani Ka'ili Aloha. Oh, God. 
אני כאילי אלוהה. Not bad, Ron. Oh, my goodness. You know, um, <clears throat> while I was singing, or we were singing that song together, I couldn't help but reflect back on the message behind the song. And, you know, I think there's a message for all of us today. Um, I think we all know people, uh, if not ourselves, we know people, couples that have, you know, uh, perhaps the love has fallen out of the marriage because for anybody, we've been married for 47 years and um, it takes work. You raise three children. We have five grandchildren and one great grandson. It takes work. And sometimes in the process of raising those children, <laughs> as this couple did back in Kipahulu, very easy to forget about those early days, you know, when you fell in it's love. And so... Um, that's part of the process that we all have to work to, you know, always rekindle and do those things necessary uh, to do that. So there you have it. Kamakani ka'ili aloha, the love snatching wind. I guess that would mean that from the, re from the result of the story, the way the story ends, there's always hope, yeah? yeah there is yeah. hope. <laughs> and yes. so make sure, brother man, you don't have to go get one umeki and put all of the memories inside and hope <laughs> she's on the other end of the beach, you know. High risk on that one. All right, Eric, <laughs> our next... Uh, <laughs> Our next picture there. Okay, so there it is. Uh, this is a sign, and this is pretty cool. This is recent. They have these signs that indicate, in this case, you're entering into Kipahulu. Uh, it says, Ka'aina o Kamakani Ka'ili Aloha. The land of the love snatching wind of Kipahulu. So perfect. <laughs> and now, you know, we journeyed after that. Uh, time at uh, the church there, we all left and we were heading out about a 45 minute drive to our next destination, which was the Hui Aloha Church out in Kipahulu. And so, let me just give you a little background. <clears throat> my family, the Kawai Aia family, uh, comes from that area. So my great, great grandmother, <laughs> who, <clears throat> she was a, a direct descendant of Kekaulike and his son Kahikili. And the area in, uh, in Kaupo, known as Mokulau, uh, there's about a 27-acre property right there on the ocean side. That is the Kawai'ai family property. It's maintained by my cousin, uh, Sam Aina. Sam's mother was Auntie Jenny Kawai'ai. And I believe Sam is, uh, cousin Sam is the only human being that lives in <laughs> Kaupo to, today. Um, and he, you can see his home because it's very distinct up Mauka because there's no other homes on that yes, backside of, of, of Haleakala. <laughs> well, he has two other, there are two other homes, but they're his homes, yeah. you know, uh, and he has children, but none of them live there. Some live in Hana and some live in the Wailuku area. <clears throat> um, and so we journeyed as we left the church and off to, um, Kaupo, mm -hmm. I could ask Eric, I think there it is, that's Mokulau, and there's Hui Aloha Church, and that whole property, that 27 acres, is the Kawai'aia property. Now the historical significance of that place, that is the closest point from the island of Maui to the island of Hawaii. So if, you, if we were standing there looking across, you would see Hawaii Island. And that, during the <laughs> 1700s, that was an all the embattling uh, oh, was, was going on between the Kohala chiefs and the Maui chiefs. Mm -hmm. That was the route that was taken from both sides. Our next uh, frame there. Okay, so we're going to pause there for a second because I know our time is, is getting close. So we, we gathered there, uh, we got into the church, and my cousin Sam shared the history that I just shared with you about the place uh, and how he, he, he's committed his life um, He's retired, he was in the, in the military, uh, traveled all over the world, but he's the, again, he's the only human being <laughs> that lives in Kaupo. Um, and trust me when I say this, if you've not been to Kaupo, there's literally nothing there. There's no store, there's no gas station. Um, so he's very well um, taken care of. He, he, knows, he knows how to survive and he knows how to live out there. And uh, we had a nice time and so we shared and I invited we're going to close out our show very shortly with uh, a video. It's about three minutes long, but it's, uh, I taught my students a song that my mentor, Kahawanu Lake, wrote. Um, 
So in that sh last shot you saw, we're looking up at the backside of Haleakala. That area is known as Pu'ulani, about 47 acres. And that 47 acres belongs, still does belong to the lake family. And so I taught them this song <clears throat> and the idea we were going to perform it there, just outside of the, the Hui Aloha Church, because <clears throat> you can't physically get up to Pu'ulani. So you're just looking at it. <clears throat> And so I asked, <coughs> excuse me, I asked a very dear friend, Akumahula, who lives in Maui. She's a lake. Uh, biologically, her father was uh, John Keola Lake, who I knew very well, grew up with that family, know them, know all of them well. And I asked uh, Sissy uh, and her halau, some of the dancers from her halau, if they were willing to come out. And she was more than willing, and so were the dancers. I know how this works because when they learn a new song like she did three years ago, um, or at least to choreograph the hula, um, they always look, the kumu hula always look for a place to take their students, you know, to the actual location so they can connect as they learn the hula. <laughs> and so this was the occasion for them. And so I'm going to ask, I think we're close to our time. So I'm going to ask uh, Eric if he would. You're going to be watching. It's a three minute and 41. You're going to hear music and my students, myself playing, and the halal dancing. The title of the song is Kaupo. Two, three, four.
was lovely. Thanks for allowing us to share that. I know we've run over time, folks. And so once again, we're out of time. We hope you've enjoyed our talk story time about this year's Huakai, the backside of Haleakala, and the historic Vahipana of Hana, Kipuhulu, and Kaupo. Join me next time on another episode of Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. Until then, everyone, take care. Aloha no. Thank you.